things that start with the K, both of them. Okay. And then I realized, okay, it only works better if I just uh, do my uh, use my original name. So, so I went back to my regular. All right. So back in the day when she was called VK, this is what she did for us, and it was very, very, very controversial. There was a whole lot of noise that was surrounding this song. We'll talk about that and more. But this is VK, aka Vimbai Zimuto. This one's called Amanda Kanaka Amai. And we have to give you your credit where it's due. Girl, what can I Thanks. And if I had a body like yours, I'll chew it off as well. So <laughs> let's just put it out there. <laughs> the ones that everybody is talking about we get to host them in the studio on the hot seat get to ask them all those difficult questions hit us up on our social media pages on power fm zimbabwe on instagram facebook as well as twitter but we're currently live on facebook right now so you can check out what's happening in the studio uh we got me by zimuto in the studio and yes she is dressed guys <laughs> so here's a misconception people think that uh you're, you're naked most of the time is this true or is this false I'm not naked all the time. That's not possible. So can we clear that? Yeah. Yes. She was only ever very, very naked twice in her life. Uh, when she was born and uh, the, during those that photo shoot, right? <laughs> <laughs> and when I'm partying. And when you're partying, obviously. Sure. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so uh, if you want to see Vimbai Zimuto, hit us up on our social media page, uh, Power FM Zimbabwe on, Inst on Facebook. We're currently live, like I said, so you can check out what's happening in the studio. <laughs> and the WhatsApp number is 0712-831-172. We'll also be taking some live calls, so you can now uh, get to ask us some questions live. But, uh, yeah, right now, let's just start off with Vimbai Zimoto. Who is Vimbai Zimoto? Uh, Vimbai Zimoto is an African Zimbabwean artist, uh -huh. uh, born and bred in Chitonguiza. Mm -hmm. And I come from Mashingo. Good Which, to be present. Oh, girl, girl, yes, girl, girl. Uh, Mashingo ne kape. All right. So, uh, which part of Gutu? Because you know, I'm not going to be here. 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 10 kilometers from Pandawa and Growth Point. Oh, okay. Yes. All right. So, uh, eh, we, 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 <laughs> Alright, so uh, Mimbai, there's been a lot that has been said about you that uh, has, you know, uh, I think 
with with everything that's been portrayed in the media so for the past few, two years there's an image that people have of you but who exactly are you before we get into that image and what has been put out there well i'm not just a musician mm -hmm. i'm an artist which means art lives in me mm -hmm. and um when i when when i talk about art i talk about expression i talk about telling a message i talk about spreading uh whatever message that needs to be spread out there if you do it through art it always comes stronger and and uh, more powerful mm -hmm. than just saying the words mm -hmm. so yeah it's always the story behind the story all right yeah. so now you you growing up uh did you get to grow up in the city or you grew up uh Kwabuto? no kugeto, kugeto. Kugeto. yes and what are some of the tell us about your life growing up Oh, my life. Oh, my God. <laughs> I have heard before that you said uh, your parents passed away when you were 10. Yes. All yes. right. So, uh, w growing up, what kind of family did you have? What kind of family unit did you have before your parents passed away? Uh, my parents were not together, mm -hmm. which means I was... Re my mom, um, yeah, had to stay after she got pregnant and... Um, go go back around about my mama role way and all that. Was she just too one young? Drama. Yeah, she was too young to get married, okay. and um, uh, my dad was ko a Kumusha boy, so they met Kohama Mission, Bagadana mm -hmm. Koko, and I was conceived. So I would say um, uh, I grew up in a family where I'm raised by a single parent, mm -hmm. who's and also a, a single grandmama, mm -hmm. and then a lot of cousins and uh, so it was one big family growing up yes it was one big family but i know my uh, like i my mom was i would say she was an intelligent woman mm -hmm. she made sure that i know my family she made sure that i know who the zimotos are mm -hmm. and we would re visit all the zimoto people every now and then mm -hmm. and yeah so who passed away first your mother or your father my dad my dad passed away like in december and my mom passed away the following may march or may or something like that so mm -hmm. it was like a five month uh, interval mm -hmm. so it all happened in a flash very quickly yeah. and it did... so now uh because you had been staying with your grandmother when your mother passed away you still continued to live with, with your my grandma. grandmother yes what was your relationship like with your grandmother growing up we're very close. I would say I was one of the few people who my grandmother actually really took care of mm -hmm. because I was the one who who was there. Most of her children went to um went to boarding schools and mm -hmm. and when they came back most of them they got married and so I was me and my little brother we were like the the two people were actually raised by my grandmother. Mm -hmm. And you spent they, a lot of time with her. Yes. Okay. So did you get to have visits to go Kumusha or you know most yes. of it was spent here in town? Yes, most of our Christmases we spent Kwa Gutu mm -hmm. and sometimes Mango Taina Kunana Tete uh just to, to have time with our the, our Zimoto side of the family. Mm -hmm. So basically I know all my relatives from the Madziva, from the Zimoto, from everywhere. Mm -hmm. So all right, so I, I ask this because we want to get a better understanding of Vimbai Zimuto's background yeah. moving forward. And so now, with your grandmother, you stayed with her. Uh, I also did hear you once mentioned that uh, you were sexually abused when you were a child. Yeah. Uh, this is something that is very, very painful to talk about. It's not. I don't think it's something that should be brushed through. Mm -hmm. However, we don't need to go deep into it. But when that happened, how old were you? I was about three years old. This was your mom was still around during yes, that time. Yes, she was there. Okay, and do you remember the person who did this to you? Yes. And uh, what happened? Was action taken against this person? No, because I didn't tell. Which oh, is... you didn't know how to speak. Not that I didn't know how to tell. Look, most of people, most children who are abused, uh -huh. even by a relative or by a passerby, uh -huh. they don't tell. Uh -huh. Not because Avakwani said, but they are, they have fear. Uh -huh. Fear, but what is going to happen to me? Because what you what if I say, mm -hmm. or what if I say, and my mom says that? So I'll tell you what actually happened was my mom found out after I couldn't pee. Mm -hmm. And then she was like, she called my auntie and um, uh, Wakawia and she checked me out. Wakati, ah, I'm not sure anything, but in Kanamanari, people don't talk. My mm -hmm. mom just walked out. And she was crying and I didn't understand. Mm -hmm. And then my... And maybe as a child, did you feel like this was your fault? Of Look, I was so young mm -hmm. and it's tough to to tell if I blamed myself for it. Mm 
Mm-hmm. Because what, what actually happened then was when I was grade six, I was at Sengisa 8 primary school and I, my best friend, I was dragged in the bush by somebody. Some guy who also wanted to rape me. Oh no. So uh, he dragged me. I know Garak Sengisa 3 was no kuzia. Who said it was in case I primary school name I get to go to Katombo and it's in Badiri Coco. I was dragged and this guy pulled me into this bush. And I can't do one by my own by my good you know, no, yes, yes, I can't do a senior. The capone is going to have food. Oh no. One of our food and beside the I remember I was wearing dress red, 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 red pink, off pink, and got into my jeeps. I remember that day like it was yesterday. Mm-hmm. So after that, the kind of kumba. And but I know, I was going to go to Bed Bridge. Mm-hmm. And some other people. And, you know, I think that was just after my mom had passed away. Mm-hmm. And then um, I told one of them, this is what happened. This guy, and I saw, and I saw. And I said, are you serious? I said, 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 Everything else that happened after that day, mm. I never told anyone. You kept it to yourself. I kept it to myself because mm. So I'm just getting a bit emotional. No, listen. If, if, so no, it's fine. If you want to 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 bear it, bear it all. No, it's, it's fine. So I, that people I, understand. I, these are some of the things I don't I don't tell on a on a. It, you're asking me things that people don't ask me. Uh huh. You know. So, Baba Reji, Tirimumba, and Tino Zajogudara, so Tima Maroja, I got a spare, mm-hmm. a spare bedroom, mm-hmm. and then got a one room. So, I got a good chorro, and I was doing my, I think I was in grade seven, I think. Dugunyo ra umwe kina tu kara ba ba this my grandmother ba ishanda kama yard, so kwa ba ba ina one week, what's up weekend? Weekends. Yes. Hey. So, Ndripa Jenny, ana kuleza, meno kwa ba enda o and so forth. Ndripa Jenny, ana kuleza, meno kwa Baba reji waka ndideiza waka tuya kunoku. Eva ndaenda. Saka ini semu na gambo ita experience. Danda kwa calculator kudara. So I went like a kid. You know that's what I did. So I went. Baba nditi pindam. Jidwan pindam. Tell it. Spidi. And I got one. And I got one. And I got one. And I got one. I hope I should hear this. And I got one. 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 And I Still, nothing happened. So, this is why when I started this with, with my pictures and all, it's a story I want to tell. Mm-hmm. And I've been keeping quiet for a long time. And I, I've talked to, to, to students before when I was doing my drama during training mm-hmm. since I ate primary school for like 15 years. I did uh, traditional dance training, mm-hmm. school choirs mm-hmm. and all that. And um, each time when I train, because I spend most of my time with girls, mm-hmm. I will just talk about these stories. Is, how are you guys at home? Chichichi, what do you like most? So that they can tell their stories. Because mm-hmm. I, rem- I could see myself in that age. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Something could be happening to a child and they would never know. And mm-hmm. teacher, you don't know what's going to happen. And it's not fair that... Uh, <laughs> I'm a parent. I, I I know kids have got very over imaginative minds and yeah. very, very active minds. Yeah. But every time my son talks, I want to believe everything he says because I say, Apana pa hachango taura nyaya, patina nyaya. Yeah, but and look, it's frustrating to you being in that situation, Kuti. This is not your imagination playing games on you. Mm. This is something really happening. Yes. And you're trying to tell people, but Abbas Kuterera. And bringing it forward to what's happening right now, you mm. say there's a story. And you've been saying this over and over, yeah. which is why I called you here. You've been saying there's a story. Mm. But no one wants to listen to the story that Vimba is trying to tell. They're just trying to say to Vimba and say on the internet. Yeah, it's mostly, when you look at it, in our culture, we say, which is the thing most people say, our culture, it is a cat, our culture, it is a mm-hmm. What is our culture? Let me ask you that question, Vimba. What is your understanding of the Zimbabwean culture? <laughs> Your understanding. Exactly. Your My understanding. understanding of the Zimbabwean culture is we are a liberal uh, culture that has been put in a cage, mm-hmm. which means we are a culture that is always, we, we are very expressive and we 
our um, preservative of our our uh, ancestors and the things that we used to know. Mm -hmm. But then we inherited other people's cultures mm -hmm. as, as years went by, mm -hmm. which made it difficult for us to keep our own. Mm -hmm. And then we end up grabbing what other people have. Mm -hmm. So to, to, to make it... It's difficult to tell what our culture really is because mm -hmm. we, we, we're grabbing everybody else's culture. Mm -hmm. And now, if you say, what is Zimbabwe's dress code? We don't even know. Mm -hmm. What is what what can you see? When you see a Zimbabwe, Naga Mirab, can you recognize them as mm -hmm. Zimbabweans? Mm -hmm. That's not possible because mm -hmm. we don't have anything that can... So you say this whole cultural appropriation is only thrown in it's defense only, of what exactly. someone... To justify someone's attitude, to justify yeah. someone's... Kuti, I'm offended by you, then I'm going to no, go... it's because of the belief. It's, it's the belief. It's like, you uh, you as a Christian, you mm -hmm. think I should do things this way, mm -hmm. and the traditionalist says I should do things this way, mm -hmm. and then Muslims coming in, they, they think we should do things that way. Mm -hmm. You know, Muslims want to have it's even more covered up than what we are. Mm -hmm. So it's just a matter of your understanding of what you want to to, 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 to understand from a picture. Mm -hmm. the, the arts, they'll be like, I don't see anything wrong because this is a, a big, big, big story you're trying to tell. Mm -hmm. When you say, when you strip off naked, if if you've noticed on most of uh, most art that has nakedness in it, mm -hmm. it's a very loud voice, either of a cry, either of sadness, either of um, uh, too much happiness, either of because when you're too happy, mm -hmm. you're liberated, which means mm -hmm. you feel like. Oh my God, you throw everything in the air mm -hmm. and you just don't care. Mm -hmm. And when you're sad, you still feel the same way. I've been stripped off, but then you keep it in. Mm -hmm. And when you... So when you laid it bare, Dimbai, when you decided to lay it bare, you said you are, you are sending a message. You've been stripped bare, but you're sending a message. What is the message that you are sending by taking off your clothes like that? Well, if you look at most, most of my caption, they are talking about um, how much I appreciate myself. How, how much I'm confident, mm -hmm. how much I am uh, a lioness in my own self. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm trying to, to say, despite all the things that people think might have broken me, mm -hmm. I'm still standing mm -hmm. and I'm still there. Mm -hmm. I, have, I have lost a lot of things, a lot of faith, a lot of, but I'm grabbing it back because I'm choosing to own it. Mm -hmm. You were married a couple of years ago uh, and then you got divorced. Yes. Uh, am I correct? Yes. Uh, do you feel like the past issues uh, of the abuse that you exper experienced uh, mm -hmm. growing up contributes to or contributed to your marriage failing? Yes. In a very big way. Uh -huh. How? Because first of all, um, I was married to a Dutch man mm -hmm. and um, he knows the whole story because I told him he's the only person I told this story mm -hmm. because he dragged it out of me. He could see that I had a wall. Mm -hmm. You know, I had a wall. I, I, I smiled, but not really from inside. So he saw it before anything else. Mm -hmm. So of course I told him the whole story mm -hmm. and he understood. He saw that I was a bit broken. Mm -hmm. And then um, as years went by, I met his mother. Mm -hmm. You know, his mother was one of those people who you would... Yeah, she's, she's a huggy person. Mm -hmm. A very affectionate person. Yeah, she she hugged me until until I lost it. <laughs> like, I'm tired of the hugs. <laughs> no, no, really. I would say, you know, you get a hug. Mm -hmm. When you grow... When, when, when we were growing up, I was never given a hug. Mm -hmm. Never. I don't remember someone hugging me just to say, I, I hope you're good. Is everything okay? Mm -hmm. oh, just a, an affectionate hug. For a child, for even when I was growing up. It does up, wonders to, to anybody. A hug is a healer. I, I learned it from them. Imagine right. this less than five years ago. Okay, so you got a hug from, uh, uh, she would from your mother-in-law. Uh, you've got kids? Yes. How old are they? My first daughter is turning 16 this year. Mm -hmm. And my second one is turning 8 in two, three weeks. Okay. So are you saying to us, you never hugged your daughter, your 16-year-old daughter? My 16-year-old, I started hugging her the same time, like five years ago. But as a baby, mothers are affectionate with their babies to make them laugh. When no. the baby cries, I did that. But now I'm going to Jackson. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you, you hug your kids when you, when they get an injection. So they stop crying. No, I gave them what we call, call love with fear. Explain that to us. Love with fear is like 
mwana akataza you get so emotional what are you doing eh, pa, pa, pa. Mm-hmm. that's love with fear mm-hmm. okay, it's, it's not my because... reference to a baby explain love with fear to a baby because your child was a baby it's in like, the group yes what happened was because i was abused mm-hmm. so when my child came to the world mm-hmm. i i all you said that i over protected her not because i was shielding her cannot did you cannot did you I protected her so that she doesn't face what I faced. So each time somebody would touch my baby, I'll be like, you know, I... But I, I'm asking you, Mimbai, did you hug your child? Because if you're an yeah, overprotective parent... Yeah, but when I say hug, and this is what I would say, Joni... Kumbo, but I'm not going to hug her just to make them feel reassured. Them. Did, you give, did you give your kids that reassuring now? So I'm not going to say, but you give a hug because the baby is in your hands. Okay. But then there's a hug that you give your child of I love you and I will never leave you. Uh-huh. You are my world, you are my everything. Uh-huh. That hug, that's what I'm talking. There's a difference. Okay. So I don't know if you're going to hug you. You know, let's just hug mm-hmm. for the sake of hugging. Mm-hmm. You know, you see on Sunday when you go to church, hug people. Mm-hmm. And then you hug in church. The, eh, eh, no, I'm eh. saying, even if you're going to church, you can tell that you're going to go to church. Okay. Because mm-hmm. this person actually cares. Even if you have a really church hug, you can tell that this is a genuine hug. Because if you have a hug, you can tell that this is a genuine hug. You understand? That, that's the All difference right. I'm saying. Okay. If you have a hug, you can because it's it's mandatory. Mm-hmm. So your mother-in-law was giving you those hugs, those which hugs. were different from hugs that you yes. ever received from anybody yes. before. Okay, I understand. I think we can move on from that one because it has been explained. But I, what, I, what I want to get to is that uh, you started receiving these hugs. You, 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 you got in touch with your emotions. Exactly. And Jesus, so Jaja, that's a good leader. That's a good leader. Right. So that's that was the trigger. Even I, I failed to control my own emotions. Mm-hmm. I took I took days crying, and I felt filthy. I felt unhappy. I felt sad. So of course. When a woman is sad in the home, the whole home is sad. Mm-hmm. So, of course, my my husband couldn't handle it anymore. And he was like, why are you so sad? Why are you feeling sad? Well, I didn't know how to explain my sadness, mm-hmm. you know. And luckily, it didn't affect my children because I see they... Were they there with you in, the, in Europe? Yes, they're there with me. Mm-hmm. So, I, I don't know. I don't know if they were affected, but I feel like they were not affected. I only see it from a little girl, the small one, because mm-hmm. she's a huggy person. She, if you just sit there and she feels like you're in, a, in another world, she just comes and she gives you a hug. Oh, that's sweet. So, that's very sweet. Yeah, so... So how is all of this, uh, this exhibition there of, of, of nudity of yourself, of your body on social media, mm-hmm. how has it impacted your kids? Well, my Have daughter, my this? daughter, and this, you know, my, my, my firstborn, she doesn't know about what happened to me when I was growing up. Mm-hmm. I never told her mm-hmm. for a lot of reasons because her life changed a lot of times whereby I moved there, I moved there. So I, I wanted her to have a sort of um, a rhythm in her life mm-hmm. and I didn't want her to be worried about her mother because uh, she's, she's always been worried about me, which I don't want her to be, mm-hmm. you know? So um, I want her to have a regular teenage life, have fun and all that. But now even if you look at her, She's more mature. She mm-hmm. she doesn't do all these crazy things young people do. Her sixteen year old friends do. Mm-hmm. She's not even on social media. She says, "I'm going to go." So she school. doesn't know that this is what's going on. She does. She knows that you're naked. Yes, she knows. And what she did she say to you? Pictures. Mm-hmm. She said to me, "This picture looks like Selena Gomez." Mm. I said, "Where did you see Selena Gomez? Because you are not on Instagram." Mm. Yeah, yeah, but I saw it. You know, she has a picture exactly like this. I said, oh. And if she's going to one day want to do uh, something something like that, would you support her? Well, I support my, my child in whatever she wants to do. Right now, she said she wants to be an air hostess. Mm-hmm. And the only thing I can do is try to figure out how many languages she can learn mm-hmm. so she can speak. You want to give her the support you never got? Yes, because if she chooses, she wants to be a rock star, mm-hmm. I will buy her a rock guitar mm-hmm. and a funky hairstyle and you know, see if she if if she enjoys doing that because when I was growing up, our 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 generation were not really encouraged 
to, to be in the arts because younger marombe and the tangons are you you're going to end up nothing or you're going to be a dancing queen like Katarina and you know that kind of, that kind of things mm-hmm. but I actually watched Katarina live on stage with my mom so I know what oh, it, it would be like oh you, do you want to be like her and you'd be like <laughs> Uh, maybe not, but <laughs> okay. Not that she was bad, but can I ask you something? I got a message here. It's uh, this person didn't tell me the name, but it's also also going to be one of my other questions. Uh, and the people driving by could say, How can you say, Wait, place as you know, so I could not so good it's a walk up fake hair because how can you send a uh, condolence message to Waka Shama? I think we established that she was saying, I've been stripped bare, so Waka Fa, they were their families have been stripped bare. Is that what the message was? I'm trying to that was the message, and okay. it's mostly from the grieving person mm-hmm. it is not a condolence in the bible it talks about hands when you're grieving they wear sackcloth and then they throw ash on themselves they never spoke about grieving while naked well you know what there's like a thousand Wait verses to. in the <laughs> bible that talk about nakedness being taboo mm-hmm. right because mm-hmm. i know i i it's like i i even googled it mm-hmm. you know one thing that i always say when I try not to contradict with the Bible, mm-hmm. but when I think about the Bible enslaving us, I try to look at it from a certain perspective. Mm-hmm. That you know, the fact and that people take us, we were our ancestors who were so comfortable in their own skin, and it got and was not a problem to who is lighter than the other. Akachuka and Diani, they didn't need to bleach their skin, but you got my samari panzi. Akarembera, akar intact, asiri. Nobody cared who's got boobs, who doesn't, mm-hmm. you know. And in that perspective, the fact that they were so comfortable like that, mm-hmm. and then the white people who enslaved us came. Bakatuzo ti makasha mateka yimb. And it's it. What about baby? Asiri jo. This one. And then vatatura Bible, vatatura everything else that is in the Bible. Mm-hmm. And then even the vavai nda kuni kaka vavai nuti saim. All right, Wimbai, 498-652 and 498-654. Get in touch with us right now. You want to speak to uh, Wimbai Zimoto. Uh, remember, this is a family listening station. So when you send in your comments or when you give us your comments on radio, on the phone, uh, try to keep them radio friendly because we also do have kids that are listening in right now. Par FM, hello? All right, that one is gone. Par FM, hello? Hi, uh, what's your name? I'm All right, Titi, give us uh, your contribution to Wimbai. Uh, and I just want to ask you, my kuti, like, I mentioned I was a girl and I'm like, so uh, the reaction is that I can't even change the world and I don't know if I'm going to be a girl and I don't know if I'm going to be a social media, I don't know, like, how did she react? All right, thank you so much for your contribution. Goodbye. Yes, uh, Fortunately, I was raised by a community. Mm-hmm. When I say I was raised by a community, I mean, my grandmother was uh, wa- was working in my yard most mm-hmm. of the time. So I was working weekends. Of course, I was working in my yard. 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 And so forth. I was working in my yard. I was working in my yard. I was more than I thought, actually. Okay. Even time and again after Panakonenda, I was told, "Kuti, you know, Vimba, you just reminded me in the Ivamurudo in nineteen Chakuti, eh, hey, chi chi chi, with a grandmother that raised me, that taught my daughter first time in grade one. Mm-hmm. So, believe me, she they understands. Have, they understand my art. All right, Pari Femelo, four nine eight six five two one four nine eight six five four. Pari Femelo, hello. Hi, what's your name? <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> All right, so she's she's definitely in support of uh, your art and everything you're doing with the arts. All right, so Parai Femelo, 498652 and 54, Parai Femelo. Yes, hi, what's your name? All right, Rudo, where are you calling from? What's your contribution? I want to ask you to... I want to say your left now. Well, can you please repeat the question? I want to ask you to... I want to say your left now. She's dressed. Why is this a surprise to you that Vimba is dressed? Do you think Kutano Famba is now figure all the time? <laughs> but guys, what's your, what's your social media handle? I think it'll make it easier if people can go to your social media. Yes, this is Vimba is Zimuto on fa- Facebook. Uh-huh. Yeah, Vimba is Zimuto on Instagram and Vizimuto on Twitter. All right. Uh, Parai Femelo. Parai Femelo. 
Hello? Do we have somebody there? All right, we, might, we have a message that has just come through and they're saying, uh, why do you talk about being naked now? Why are you being naked now? Yet you've never done this uh, exhibition of your body before. Why, why now? Because back then I didn't feel like I, I was how you say, at that point of expression. I didn't feel like I could express myself fully mm -hmm. without having to feel like I'm not enough. You know, and so when you when you strip and bare naked, mm -hmm. it shows you 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 portray your feeling mm -hmm. like I've been I've been torn apart. I've been stripped off my my dignity before. Mm -hmm. Somebody took off one of the most important things to me. They uh, they destroyed my little thing. Mm -hmm. You know, and then at the end of the day, I never talked about it when I was growing up. I never I kept it in for too long. Now I really want to let it out. Okay, uh, prior to my love. Four nine eight six five two one five four. Power FM. Hello. Hello. Good afternoon. You're live on radio. Who am I speaking to? All right. What's your contribution? All right, thank you so much. So this caller, just in case you didn't hear, they said, uh, I totally support what Mimbai is doing. Uh, the people that are condemning her are the ones that are watching these Game of Thrones. I mean, have you watched Game of Thrones? <laughs> not yet. Oh my gosh, Game of Thrones is that show you cannot watch with your parents. You can't watch Nemi <laughs> Arikani because there's a lot of nudity there. So these are the people that are watching nudity and, uh, you know, sending each other my videos and yeah. stuff. And yet are condemning you to try to Mimbai the Ajite. Bye, Femala. Yes, hi. What's your name and where are you calling from? All right, uh, go ahead with your contribution. I don't really think uh, this girl is in the right state of mind. She needs to be thoroughly questioned. She needs to be questioned about her mind. She needs to be questioned What's your response to that? He says it's a publicity stunt. You have done nothing. You should be uh, cautious because John is not going to deal. Okay, I would like to comment first on what he said first. Uh -huh. I have a problem in my mind mm -hmm. that my I am crazy in the head. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing I can show you is I live in Europe mm -hmm. and I live in the Netherlands mm -hmm. where people are checked about their sanity after every six months. Let me hold you there. Let me hold you there because right now it is just a couple of seconds before the news at 2 p.m. We don't usually do this where we continue the interview after the news, but uh, this is very hard because the messages are coming through and uh, we need to keep this going. So uh, we're going to stand by for the news right now and then we'll continue with Vimbai Zimoto. Oh my gosh, like what's up is hard right now. 